Hello, welcome back to my channel. Today is episode two of Adventures in Self-Publishing. I've just come back from FantasyCon and I'm still processing everything that went on from there, so this video will be slightly more rambly, but I'm going to share some of my thoughts from people I met who have done self-publishing before. So at the weekend I spent some time with some self-published fantasy authors, some of whom I knew and had met before and some I'd only chatted to online. So I was talking to Ryan Cahill, Michael R. Miller, Philip C. Quantrell and a number of others. And one thing in speaking to other people as well is to remind me to say that these three in particular are some of the most successful self-published indie, whatever you want to call it, fantasy authors. So using them as a template of what to aspire to is absolutely right. Assuming that if I go down this path, I'm going to get to those kind of levels is kind of unrealistic. And of course, there are thousands and thousands of other fantasy authors out there doing it. And it's not as simple a case as, you know, tab A into slot B leads to enormous success in self-publishing. If it did, all of the other fantasy authors out there would be on the same kind of trajectory but there were still lessons to learn there are still a lot of things I picked up from talking to them about how they got to where they are and the first thing which I, I knew because from it's the same for every author whether you're self-published or traditional is the first step is it comes down to a lot of hard work I know that sounds really obvious but people are always searching for the silver bullet like how do I get a book published how do I get an agent how do I get to this and there isn't a silver bullet if there was the publishing industry would just would not be as it is now. It would just be completely different. With the case of talking to Philip, I spoke to him and said, you know, where, where did you start? How did you get to where you are now? And if possible, I'll get him on the channel in the future and we'll talk through it in a bit more detail. But it kind of boiled down to, he said that when he first started out, he was doing like two or three books a year. And none of these are short books. They're all, you know, pretty beefy books, which I'll, I'll come back to book length in a minute. And he built up his audience and then he kind of slowed down to kind of two books a year, and I think now he's on one book a year. But he does have something like 19 or 20 novels out there in different series and novellas and tie-ins. You've got Michael R. Miller, who started with quite a good chunky, you know, trilogy, and then he just brought an omnibus out of that. And then you've got Ryan Cahill, who did, you know, novel, but then he's a novel, novella, novel, novella, and he's built up this huge kind of body of work already since he started in, I think it was 2020, right in the middle of the pandemic. So in three years, he's written an enormous number of books, an enormous number of words, and he's built up his following. There again, hard work, dedication, and focus on what they were doing. I'll come back to book length discussion points in a minute, but one thing they all mentioned, of course, is also schedule. With traditional publishing, usually it's one book a year for a series or for an author, most of the time. Some do have multiple books with different publishers and they're able to bring out more than one book a year but with traditional publishing it's typically one book a year whatever you set with indie publishing they've all said if you say it's going to be one book a year then you stick to that and people will come to expect it if you start out and it's a book every three months or you know something every three months you need to stick to that as well because people come to expect it so whatever schedule i start with i need to keep doing that the other thing is, some people said, don't start with novellas, it won't work. Other people said, right now, there's a, quite a good surge. People want shorter fiction and novellas are doing very well. But equally, if I brought one out and then I need to say everywhere, oh, the next one will not be for six months or a year, people will know that up front so they don't then turn around and go, well, where's the next one after two weeks or three months or whatever it might be? So scheduling is very, very key. Finding the time to do that as well as obviously a challenge. Some of the self-published authors that I've spoken about are full-time. Some of the other people that I met are not full-time writers. They have a day job and the money they get from their indie publishing and their books and everything else supplements their income or, you know, has it adds to it if they're kind of part-time workers or whatever it might be. And then, of course, there's finding time around family and having a social life and sleep, of course. You need that too. So all of these things are kind of juggling. So going straight into indie pub is very, very difficult. Doing it alongside everything else, like being traditional, the same challenges apply. But then there's all of the other things you have to do on top. As a traditionally published author, I don't need to spend as much time worrying about the editing, the promotion, the getting it to bookshops, the you know advertising. All that is taken care of by someone else. Whereas 
as I now step forward into this with this novella or possibly something else first, I'm going to have to start thinking about all of these things. And at the moment, I don't know enough to say how it would work or what I would do, which is why I'm also not saying the book is going to come out this time next year because I don't know enough yet to feel comfortable doing that. So I don't want to put my foot in it equally and say, oh, I'll put the first novella out here and the next one will be out in two months and it's not going to be like, it'll be like six months or whatever it might be. So timing and finding time to write alongside everything else remains a constant challenge. The next thing, of course, is book length and series length. In traditional publishing, particularly in fantasy, trilogies are kind of the go-to thing. It's not always the case, it doesn't have to be, but a lot of them are, you know, short trilogies. Standalones are also very popular. Angu Robot, who is my traditional publisher, they have a lot of standalone books. Interesting ideas. People come up with a concept, a thing, and they put out a one-off book. And if it does well, they might do a sequel. I've done trilogies with them. I've done duology with them. Previously, I had two um, Orbit trilogies with Mage in the title. With Indie, it's completely different. Longer running series do better. In traditional publishing, unless you're one of the really big boys and girls who can do five, six, seven, eight, ten, or as many books in the series as I need to when I get to it, it's kind of uncommon. They prefer a shorter series in traditional because there's a natural tail off. From talking to everybody at the weekend and what I kind of gathered before, if you have a longer series, that seems to work better. You can then obviously control the pricing issue. So if you're putting out a new book, you can then discount all of the previous ones to get more of an upsurge. But equally, if you put out book nine, they were seeing, you'll see a, a rise in sales, obviously book ones to wait because they're all there. The other issue with traditional versus indie is you don't control the stock. You don't have it sat in a warehouse. You're not worrying about printing costs in the same way. Therefore, you know, a traditional publisher will typically prefer shorter books, especially for debut authors, because it costs more for them. And if, say, their initial print run is 10,000 books, that's so much per book, that's so much paper, everything, and then it's storing the books, and then it's taking them out to bookshops, and obviously the books don't sell, they can be returned. As an indie publisher, an indie author, I don't have to worry about any of that. It's print on demand with a company. The stock isn't sat there gathering dust. I'm not paying for storage and so on. And I don't have to worry about the printing economies of scale. So like I said, I print 10,000 books, it'll cost me I don't know, £2 per copy. If I print 20,000 books, it'll cost me £1.50 and all this kind of thing. I don't have to worry about any of that kind of thing. I obviously have to be aware of the printing cost and therefore the margin and all of that stuff and the money goes to Amazon or whoever else is printing it, Inkspark, whatever. That has to be a factor, but not in the same way. So as a debut fantasy author, let's say my first book is 150,000 words. It's a little bit long, but that's okay. As an indie author, I could have 200,000, 300, 400,000. It doesn't matter. It just doesn't matter that the fans are happier with a longer book and they will read it. And equally, if I say this is the first of six books, great, they're okay with that. Whereas with traditional publishers, they would be more reluctant. They would say, let's do a trilogy, let's see how it goes, and then if it does well, we'll do the next three. I'll give you a good example. So Adrian Tchaikovsky, who's a very, very popular science fiction and fantasy author, his first series was Shadows of the Apt, which is a 10 book series. I believe, he may correct me on this or someone else might know, he originally got a contract for four novels and each of his books are pretty hefty. They're all at least 600 pages. They're pretty beefy books. I believe originally he got a contract for four books, and when those did well, he then re and received a contract for the following three, and then for the final three. And you can kind of read those first four books as a complete series, sort of, but obviously they then go on to the full ten books, and he got the full series because it did well enough. That kind of thing just doesn't really happen. And with indie publishing, I don't need to worry about that. I could say this is the first of twelve, and people will be like, okay, and they'll go out and pick it up. Equally, if I go in and say the book is 200,000 words, that's fine again. I'm paying for the printing the, the, the per book, but not in the same way. The editing costs are mine, proofreading, cover, all of that I'm paying for. But it doesn't seem to matter nearly as much. And longer books are preferred. Tie-in, fiction tied into your world, also seems to work a lot better with indie press. It doesn't work as well with traditional. So there, there are a lot of it's very, very different thinking, but 
my mind is clearly that the readers must be some of the same people. There can't be readers that only just read indie and only just read traditionally published fantasy. There must be a crossover. So if they're the same readers, why is this weird disconnect? Why does it exist? Is it just that traditional publishers don't understand their readership well enough? This is something I still need to kind of dig into and talk to some more self-published fantasy authors and try and see if they can kind of explain it. Is it just the fact that the traditional publishing market is slow and the model is not nearly as up to date and they're just not really as in touch with their readers as they think they are? I'm not really sure what it is yet. So there is still a lot to learn. As you can see, there's still some frustrations that I have. I don't understand enough, so I'm not racing into this. I'm recording these videos as I go along, so I'm learning, so hopefully you can learn. But equally by not saying when I'm going to release the book, I don't kind of put a book out and just fluff it the first time and go, oh yeah, I really should have learned more about X, Y, and Z before I did it. So I'm going to be talking to some of the authors that I've spoken to and some other ones and just asking them things that they've learned from doing it already, mistakes they've made that I can try and avoid, things I should be looking at that they've done, and try and just gather as much information as I can. In the meantime, I am going to start working on another indie project. This is the sequel to the first novella. Maybe that's not a good idea. Maybe they'll turn around and say, you should start with a novel, then do a novella, and then a novel, then another novella. I don't know. I need to find out more. But I've nearly finished my kind of contract novels for my traditional, and I want to start something new, and I want to start writing something, so I'm going to do this just for myself. I may end up releasing it in the future. I don't know, but we'll see. But anyway, that's what I'm going to talk about for today, but there'll be other videos in this series over the coming months.